Today, Japan is a peaceful nation that is appreciated for its aesthetics and culture. However, Japan's political structure was once heavily dominated by the military with the intent of invading other East Asian countries. After World War I, a period of depression began in Japan that lasted until the mid-1930s. It hit hardest in rural areas and many people were desperate for economic security. Many soldiers volunteered to fight in the war because they believed that Japan's expansion into East Asia was economically beneficial. Japan began its invasion in 1931 in Manchuria. Then, Japan started taking over parts of China in 1937 and the French Indochina three years later. Hideki Tojo became prime minister in 1937. Japan then signed the Tripartite Pact with Germany and Italy in 1940. Germany then started invading parts of Europe and the United Kingdom felt threatened. The United States started providing military supplies to the United Kingdom and the countries that were fighting against Germany. Because Germany and Japan were allies, the United States also stopped shipping steel and oil to Japan. President Franklin Roosevelt did this in hopes that Japan would stop its East Asian military expansion. This was an issue for Japan because to invade other countries, they needed these natural resources, which at the time were mainly supplied by the United States and Great Britain. Because Japan was lacking oil and other natural resources, they decided to attack the United States and British forces in Asia. On December 7, 1941, Japan launched an attack on Pearl Harbor. America declared war on Japan and the nation was in a state of total war. The Japanese government was an authoritarian one and it started controlling the public opinion using schools, textbooks, the media, and the police. My grandfather, Yoshio Hamaguchi, was born in 1932 and grew up in this time where the country's schooling was centered primarily on the war. Children, including my grandfather, were taught from a young age to work towards a war-centered lifestyle. Boys were taught to train and expected to dedicate their lives to their country. He read textbooks in school that were designed to make the children hate America, England, and the Allies that included the words monsters and demons in reference to the Americans and the British. War propaganda was tailored to convince their citizens that Japan would be invincible if they showed complete loyalty and obedience. People readily accepted this war-based ideology and soldiers went off into situations that were practically suicidal in the name of the Emperor. Japan's emperor-based ideology before this time was that the emperor was descended from the gods who created Japan. People did not look at the emperor or speak his name because he was believed to be so sacred. The Japanese were raised for generations with this mindset and were expected to give their lives for the emperor if it was asked of them. Japan took advantage of the citizens' unwavering loyalty to the emperor by presenting him as a political figure in which they were expected to die for. After Japan attacked Pearl Harbor, they had a period of many military successes. However, this all changed in June of 1942 in the Battle of Midway, when the Japanese fleet sustained great losses and were forced to turn back. Once the Allies started gaining power and the Japanese losses began to affect the citizens, the Japanese government told everyone to get the women and children to the rural areas of Japan. <laughs> で、第危険だから、まず女子供はもっと田舎から田舎の方へね疎開するように国からの命令が出て。My grandfather, who was living in Hiroshima in one of the three main naval bases of Japan, moved to Kochi with his grandparents, while his parents stayed behind in Kure. However, in late 1944, American forces began leading massive air attacks on Japan. 
By the end of World War II, 55.2% of Kochi and 41.9% of Kure was destroyed. During these bombings, my grandfather and other men, women, and children had to run and hide in crowded holes in the ground until it was deemed safe enough to walk outside again. When the atomic bombs were dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, approximately 120,000 civilians died. Fortunately, my grandfather's parents were far enough away to survive. After the war ended, my grandfather stayed in Kochi. Japan had to recover from its losses in the war, and many things had to change in Japan. For my grandfather, it was a great turning point in his life. この20年というのはね after the war, the Allies discussed how to disarm Japan and stabilize its economy while preventing remilitarization. They removed all propaganda from textbooks and teachings. In 1947, they removed political control from the emperor to the parliamentary system and renounced the right to wage war by taking away all armed forces that were not primarily defensive. In 1950, the Korean War broke out and Japan became the principal supply depot for UN forces. Japan then started making TVs, VCRs, automobiles, and other new technology, and the economy boomed. Japan did really well in the 1960s, becoming one of the richest countries in the late 70s, and the economy kept improving, but slowed to a stop in 1991. 84 years, one world war, and an economic miracle later, my grandfather experienced Japanese history unfold before him. He watched Japan rise from the ashes of defeat to become something much greater than he ever thought would be possible.